Now in the purification and the fasting is the abstinence. Anytime we fast you're cutting the connection of shaitan into your, your being. And that's why intermittent fasting was recommended, now it's very popular. This was recommended by awliyaullah that try to eat the one time a day. Means try to have your significant meal only once and many effects upon the body that would open now the subject within the stomach and the reality of the stomach. That when the stomach is in a continuous use we have to understand the spiritual physiology of what's happening. Emanation is coming from the heavens and dressing us. The emanation of dunya is so powerful now with satanic forces it's coming up the feet. So then where are they going to clash and the equator is the belly button. So then look at the belly button is the stomach area, look to the other side of the belly button is the back of your back where your spine is coming all the way to the back of your spine is like the opposite side of your belly button. So your stomach problems, back problems and then all the people with horrible leg problems. Why is that? Because that's a sign of the spiritual attack and energy warfare now that happening upon insan. That they have heavenly emanations, they have their zikr, their practices, some light in their soul, praying, whatever they're doing in life. To, to try to improve themselves and the emanation of the material world that's so profound now with all its negativity is then coming up their legs, causing many difficulties upon their feet. And all their feet then coming up all their legs causing all the pain within their legs, this emanation of energy is just moving up and that's why all the pain upon the leg and then where this emanation is trying to go. It's trying to go to the heart. Its whole interest is to enter the genitals, enter the stomach, from the stomach enter into the organs and go for the heart. So view them not only as energies but imagine like uh, orcs from, uh, from the Lord of the Rings. They're negative forces that they're under attacking this human being and their whole interest and their order from shaitan go after his heart. Because they can't attack the heart because of the light that's coming on the heart. So all day long the emanation is coming up the feet, coming up the feet, coming up the feet and going. Then how they're going to enter into the, the body with even more force is the ta'am and the food. So shaitan has now contaminated everyone's source of food and that's why it was so important to eat per correct, eat clean. Eat with your du'a on it on all the food, make sure the people who are touching and providing the food have wudu, they're clean but now nobody has access to that in the western world. That they're surrounded by so many horrific types of food that you know you think it is fast food but there are people who are in junub, they have no concept of wudu, they have many mental psychological issues and they just touching everything you eat, touching everything you eat. So then the food becomes like a bomb, like a disaster waiting to happen. As soon as you put it into your mouth like 500 shaitans are in there. What happens then? Those shaitans now are going into the stomach, they're the inside force helping all those negative forces that were coming up your legs. So now you can see that the great battlefield is the stomach of insan. Because whatever he's eating, whatever he's drinking from this contaminated and polluted dunya we live in now and we don't know what was in all of these things they were giving people, their aggression become much more angry, random stabbing everywhere, random killing everywhere. People are angry, people are, are ferocious, people are demonic. We don't even know how many are human left and how many became completely shaitan. So imagine whatever they're preparing goes into the stomach and completely contaminate that insan with all bad desires, all negativity. And the energy already coming up the feet, then what happens is a battlefield within the stomach. 
So that's why then there's so many stomach problems for believers. And that's why I recommended intermittent fasting and awliyaullah came and said, try to eat one time a day. That you eat at night, stop your eating and don't eat again for 14 to 15 hours. And then when you eat, you eat your food and alhamdulillah eat a good healthy meal and to fill yourself throughout the day on intermittent fasting. You can have your drinks and try not to have sugar within what you're eating because the sugar is the danger within food also that activate every type of uh, difficulty within the stomach. So they drink water, they drink tea without the sugar in it, coffee without sugar in it. They're liquid no problem but the shaitan is moving within the meats, the foods and all of this contamination. As soon as you enter into an intermittent fast your stomach is being shut down, the process of digesting is shut down. As a, re, as a result of digestion shutting down the body produces enzymes that rejuvenate all the organs. It's like a factory working 40 hours, you know 20 hours, overtime 60 hours, it's just never ending. And as a result it begin to malfunction. As soon as you shut the factory down all the essential organs can rejuvenate themselves, they have like a breathing space. So then it's highly encouraged to fast throughout the day intermittently. And as a result what Prophet taught us is that shaitan can't travel when you're fasting. He's moving through your blood system. As soon as you enter into this type of intermittent fast it restricting the path and the movement of shaitan and stopping you from putting all this negativity into your mouth all day long. So then has immense reality and that's why the immense problems with stomach. And anytime you're having all of these energy practices and all this dunya all around you, there's going to be problems with your digestion and constipation. That constipation is a toxicity for the body. It's like the… the well it is the waste of your entire being not leaving you because this energy flow is having a conflict. All the positive energy you're producing and all the negative energy of dunya, again when the stomach is in a continuous battle, one of the difficult signs of that battle is the inability to relieve the waste from the body which are all the toxicities and toxins of the body. All the poison of the body hasn't left. So imagine you're going around with the poison all day long, one day, two day, three day, hence the importance of turmeric and ginger. That in these days of difficulty have lots of turmeric, fresh turmeric and ginger. The turmeric is, is, uh, is something that kills toxicity, Prophet described it kills everything but cancer and anti-inflammatory and antiviral means it kills every type of bacteria and relieves the stomach and metabolism. Same with black seed one to two tablespoons of black seed every day. Again for the digestion they even found it to be anti-inflammatory and beneficial for the lungs, especially when the lungs are under attack with all these viruses. So I mean these are all the tip of nubuwa and prophetic medicines Allah gave to us and this is just a sample because we're going to get email now with you know 50 people who've studied this that we should do this, 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 all that is good. Everybody can search that on the internet but we're just going to give a synopsis of the most potent ingredients now for us is turmeric and ginger. The, the ginger to boost the immune system, turmeric for the anti-inflammatory and to relieve the metabolism of the body inshaAllah and the black seed for respiratory difficulties. So with all this energy understanding then now the stomach is in conflict and in difficulty and where else? The back. The energy that's coming up and the energy that's saying, no, no you can't go any further because you're not going to overtake the servant's heart and hit it down. And where it hits you find the bulge comes out which is the lower back and lower back pain where the disc is now having… Uh, it's not able to, to, to carry the conflict of energy that's coming because the alif for insan is his spine. All the emanation of your electro power, your whole wiring for your home of your body is this spine. 
When this energy is coming down with a great force and the dunya energy is coming up with the equivalently negative desires and all the negativity around, then what's going to happen is then the, the bulging and the, the bones and, and the, the spine problems. And that causes the immense back pains, the pinched nerves and all these different types of difficulties. When we understand that we're an energy being and the power of fasting, the power of opening the eyes, the power of what we eat and make all our du'as upon our food that if, if it's not something that we can verify it was, it was completely clean, it has to be halal but it was not maybe from a clean person then we recite and halal is halal, zabiyah is something different. Some meat that you can eat is halal but it may not be zabiyah, doesn't make it haram, it's still halal. So, zabiyah is zabiyah, it's a higher level of purity, halal is halal, you can't call something halal haram. So haram is pork, haram is, is something you, you found on the, a squirrel on the side of the road and you want to eat it, no this is haram, you can't <laughs> take <it>. roadkill and <laughs> So yeah, you, but you can't take the, the food of believing people and say, no this is haram. No it's not haram, it's halal, it may not be zabiyah. So those foods are… are, are are halal but the du'a has to be recited upon that. The du'a of Ila Sharif nabi three shahada, seven day istighfar, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakeel, whatever you want you keep reciting upon the food that Allah done that whatever is doubtful Ya Rabbi to make it to be pure and to be clean for me to eat and inshaAllah the rest is in Allah's hands. Those who are living in the Muslim world alhamdulillah fortunate for them they have everywhere, halal is everywhere. But for those who are living outside of the Muslim world Every, everything around them is, is, is not of that reality and uh, not of that pure nature. So that becomes a, a difficulty of the energy. When we understand the energy of the spine and the back pain, don't let people to touch you. When you're in training of energy and an and, and enormous amount of energy training, attending in zikrs, attending in all these practices. You have a huge electromagnetic force and, and Divinely power moving on your spine. With all these understanding of energies don't let people to touch you because as soon as they touch you maybe all their burdens came onto you and as a result you got hit with back pain, you got hit with some sort of difficulty. That's why the shaykhs they walk around with asa, they put the asa like a, a shield from touching people. Somebody can hold the cane and the shaykh makes a du'a but don't start putting his hand on everybody because he's going to get carried and get zapped by something uh, very difficult and, and, and difficult for him to carry. So if you've done that enough times, it's like a little kid who keeps touching electrical wire and keep touching… you do that enough times you understand it, it hurts, <laughs> right? Most people say, well, I don't know what you're talking about, do you see little kids, they keep touching the electrical outlet, they keep touching the electrical onto one time, they get zapped so good they never get near that again. <laughs> Same thing when people don't know what they're doing, they're touching everybody, I'll pray for you, I'll touch you, I'll pray for you. And one time they get a good zap and that's it, they're never going to touch anyone again and they're going to use their asa and they're going to learn the system. Because the direct conveyance of energy can paralyze, can make somebody very sick. We pray that Allah open more and more understanding for us inshaAllah. Wa rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri surat al-Fatiha. Anybody who trying to research uh, if we've talked about a subject or a video that we've talked about, you probably have better luck on Facebook because the Facebook videos that we load on my page. I actually load what the talk is about. So you just type in uh, Shaykh No John or No John and a subject and then it'll show you any post we've made of that or any video we've made of that and then you can search for that video and, and, and listen to it, transcribe it. But once it goes to YouTube, the YouTube crew is changing the titles and saying, oh the Dajjal is coming and the star of this is that, something they do it as as more of a clickbait to entice people to click and to, to come towards the channel. But anybody researching probably should use the Facebook page to research, my page the one with the, the million something and then put in the search, the keywords has to have my name and then what the, the word you're looking for and then try to find those subjects inshaAllah. The interactive, do we have questions?